Okay, so pretty much all of you know about the problem with these and, and cracked axles. Pretty much all these axles got splits in them, some on both sides. We're going to fix it. So first you got to get them out. Get them out. The, the wheels just pry off. I use this little tiny crowbar here. They come off nice and easy. Then what you do is you take a little pointer. There's white gear above this one so that you can't get it out. All you got to do is press this axle through to here. And this gear will drop out. And then you got both ax you got both axle gears out. The back one will just come out when you take the wheels off. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, as always, we want to make it so that the split cannot continue. Now, two of these are split basically all the way through. That's okay. They're going to get hit with a double whammy when we fix this. Here's a sear split right here. Okay, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take my little pointer here, and just next to the axle, at towards the end of the split, I'm going to put a little dot there, gently, because then I'm going to take the smallest drill bit in my drill index on a thing, on a handle here, and that little dot we just made will help hold this thing in place, and I'm just going to Go ahead and gently twist it. Okay, it's through. That relieves the pressure. We also need that for one other thing that we're going to do. And that is when we put these wheels back on, they're each going to get the tiniest dot of goop. And as that wheel goes in here, whatever we didn't get, the goop is going to press along through there. And it is going to we're gonna get goop down towards him and see there's a split right there so on this one I'm gonna make a little dot right there okay now I'll drill that hole and each actually each wheel will get that'll help keep it engaged mainly but now because I've only got a very small working time here I'm gonna mix this this uh, JB weld instead of doing the baking soda super glue like we used to we're gonna do this we're gonna use JB weld plas plastic binder look at this 15 minutes that is no joke in 15 minutes this thing is fully cured so what we got to do is I'm going to mix it on a piece of baking parchment. I'm going to go through all of, all of them, and then, I'll, then I will uh, put the camera on for the last one, so that then we can move them over to the drying station. All right, I'm going to get all but one done here. Okay, it's a two-part epoxy. What I'm doing is I'm taking my pointer and I'm putting it on here, looking for the split. Splitting it open just a little bit, and then I'm taking this exacto and I'm getting it on there. Okay, wipe it off, check the other side. So I think this one has one, and it does. Okay, and we got to move quick, because there's no joke that this stuff is done in 15 minutes at full strength. And we're going to do each one of them. Hmm. 
I'm not clamping them because this epoxy is going to bridge this tiny gap. And then later when we put goop on the very tip of our wheels, that is what will hold them in place and hold them engaged. I want to kind of keep my the hole that I drilled I don't want to plug that up because you need that escape hatch on on axles like this oops uh oh we'll check the escape hatch again uh, when we go to when these are cured because we can redrill it and we probably will just in case then I'm going to go set these on a piece of cork underneath a work light and that will keep them that will keep the humidity from wrecking the cure, which we don't want. And then, let them sit there for a little while. And we'll time it 15 minutes from the last one. And then we'll check them. This is going to be nice. That white gear here has got two gears on it. And one of them gets really close to the long section of this axle. So we need to make sure... That we aren't getting any big globs on here that that could possibly catch on. This is the last one. Good. Okay, there it is. Now we'll come back in a little while. And we'll see the results. Okay, all axles fixed. All wheels polished. The ends have been painted with the uh, sewer paint. And let's take a look at our fix here. Let's find a good one. Um, here's a decent one. Let's see one where you can see better. It's very, very hard to see. Here we go. Okay. Let's look. Let me get that to focus right there. Okay, do you see the white lines, the two white lines? That is our bond, and that is a stretched bond. So when I take it out, and I put it back in, the plastic bond has a little flexibility to it. And they're good. Some of these are nice and tight, the way they should be. There's like two of them that are a little loose. That I think I'm going to put a dot of super glue on those once you put them back together. But... Um, and they're all coated. They've all been polished and coated with the ox guard. So they're ready. And then, so now we're ready to reassemble these trucks. Well, let's take a look at our two experimental versions here. All right. So I've gone ahead and I've clipped off the ends here. I've taken the worms off of two motors. And I'll tell you what, that is not easy to do. But here is the plan. We're going to take these blue label Mitsumis. Don't ask me where to get these. I got them so long ago that I can't even find them in my, in my back 
in my I got them off eBay for sure, and I can't even find them because I got them many years ago. Um, if they work good, I'm gonna look for some more of them. They they are 24 volts and they've been tested. They've been broken. Um, they must have precious metal brushes because breaking them in doesn't do much. They they're very very constant draw, and we're gonna go like this. It just so happens. There is like exactly the amount of room that we want. And they fit right there, just like that. And they mesh with the worm just right. And that's what we're gonna try. That's gonna be our plan. I'm gonna mount up two of them. And in order to do a single decoder on two motors like this, like the DD40 with the face ripper motors, we are going to wire these in parallel. So one motor will be wired up, up to the circuit board with the, with the uh, DCC, with the decoder, uh, orange and gray wires that, that control it. Then this motor will be wired over to the other motor. Now they draw nothing for power, so stall is not even, the two of them stalled together are not even going to be up to one amp. Not even close. But that's our plan. So far, so good. And I'll tell you what, taking the worm off of this gear, off of this motor, is not easy. I have almost broke the um, Northwest Shortline Puller a couple of times. I think I'm going to go a half head and I'm going to have to make a tool on the lathe to take this worm out because it is it has uh, it is it put a bunch of wear and tear just getting two of them off on on my puller and I don't have the ear nail small enough to just tap them out so I'm gonna make an ear nail to do that and we'll do that later but so far um, what I got to say about using the plastic weld is that this is a solid fix and it is better than our baking soda super glue because it has flexibility, it's fully cured, um, and all of the axles are good to go. And I'm going to say that that was a big success. Now, this is not the first time I've used it, of course, so I knew it was going to be pretty successful. I am surprised by its elasticity when it, um, when I take out an, a wheel and put it back in it retains its it'll go back to its form and then it'll stretch a bit with the wheel in there but it'll stay and it won't crap out on me and so that is a very very good win on these tiny axles i was pretty sure that it was going to work but and and we're, we're going to test them over time we'll find out how long this holds all right that should do it for this this thing um where's the stuff one last look at it this is it jb plat well plastic liner 15 minutes and that is no joke you got to get that on there and then cure it because 15 minutes you're done